Yeah, so I get pretty much this talk at Gwenek about uh, two months ago. Um, so this is porting uh, LibreOffice to GTK3 and uh, the current status of that. So first, uh, I was going to do a quick demo of a uh, ordinary uh, GTK3 application and then a comparison of that against the current state of 5.1. So over here, we have um, Glade. So I use Glade because Glade still has things like uh, menus uh, and things like that. So it's still an application that's quite like our one. It hasn't gone down the route of um, it ends with gear menus and things like that. So what we have is menus that highlight in blue like that, a little blue line uh, separating them there. Down over here we have a tab dialog which uh, is a similar effect. You've got a little grey highlight if you go over it, you click it, it goes blue. And if you go over, uh, if you use the mouse to go to menus, you see you just have uh, 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 no underline. If you hold down the, um, sorry, the out button, you see that they, um, the mnemonics appear uh, automatically, uh, but only if you traverse the keyboard. If you do the same thing over here and go down to uh, the highlight, that's not but okay, the highlight basically. And you have an uh, ordinary checkbox, there's nothing too special there. And the um, spinners are now really, really large. And so like that's your down, and that's your up, and the other side is like that. Yeah, standard enough, uh, you have uh, bold headings there and things like that. So that's a uh, standard uh, standard GTK application, pretty much. So if we get rid of that, we should reveal a 5.1 behind here. Uh, with GTK3 enabled. Yeah. Huh. Uh, the first thing is that, uh, yeah, uh, it's not because I've used keyboard carrier. Uh, so again, here we are now, we have the same effect. Here we have the blue highlighting and blue line between it, just like that. Uh, we treat this like a tab dialog. So we have a grayness as you highlight there. You click on it and it goes blue as you would expect. And if I hold down the keyboard, uh, alt mics are automatic like that. And if you go to tools, uh, what do we have? We'll do that. We have something on that. Well, anyway, over here we've got the highlights. And you can see around the corner there we have the, um, uh, the focus rectangle. It, it's quite different now. So we actually natively draw the focus rectangle with uh, native for GTK, we, we use GTK to draw the focus rectangle instead of using our, um, uh, uh, our, own, our own rectangle with our painting like we did uh, in GTK2. So that, that's, that's what it's supposed to look like for me, so that's what I see when I use GTK3 port. I know there's some complaints for people with different themes that it doesn't quite look right, but this is my experience, and that's why, why I think it's not too bad. So uh, I know there's different experiences on a dark team, but we're not using a dark team. So, uh, so. now, uh, we'll talk back here to this. And, oh yes, because of course that's an empty presentation. We don't want that anymore. We want the other one. And that's a demo of that. And I will briefly run through the uh, architecture of GTK3 and its difference from GTK2. And basically, the way the whole thing kind of works is that every platform, say Mac or, or Windows or the different ones you have under Linux, has to implement a SAL instance. And the SAL instance mostly, mostly consists of create and destroy stuff. Or stuff for either uh, printers, frames, or virtual devices. And every platform has to actually implement, uh, implement every one of them. And say so the frames are your actual visual windows on screen, your virtual devices are your non visible equivalents, which are normally uh, for, for, for X, we're talking about fixed maps versus uh, your standard windows. And you have to have these two basic parts to, to uh, implement the VCL stuff. Uh, frames then. And uh, virtual devices implemented an acquired graphics, a SAL graphics. 
So graphics is the thing that you draw with, so you draw a rectangle via your uh, set of graphics. Uh, draw lines like that. And some of the APIs are optional, so that if you return false with them, then VCL will go off and animate it as best it can with its other uh, 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 printers, the non-optional non ones. Some of them are ridiculous, uh, but make sense for printers like Draw EPS. You can give EPS to it and it'll render it. You put your EPS into your postscript when you're uh, printing to a postscript printer, and it generally does actually nothing on the other, and on any of the other platforms. The native widget support stuff is part of the cell graphics as well, and that's where we actually draw um, things that look like your native uh, platforms, widgets, onto our surfaces. So um, uh, when we have the GTK buttons, we don't actually have GTK buttons, we have our own buttons, and then we use GTK <coughs> APIs to draw onto our buttons to make them look just like a GTK button. So these are uh, some standard implementations of these CL plugs. So we obviously have Windows implementation, we have Mac implementation, and then we have our uh, Linux implementations. And they are uh, selectable at runtime, so they are in the VCL plug pattern. The original one, the generic one, the Gen one, is for X11. And then we have GTK2 one and a bunch of KE ones. They inherit from the X11 one. So the important bit there is that they mostly reuse X11 code, except it as native widget support. So we have GTK stuff, a lot of GTK rendering. And if it doesn't uh, need to do anything different than the original X11 code, it just reuses the X11 code. In that case, that GTK cell frame inherits directly from X11 cell frame. And you find all of this all the way down the tree that most of the time you're looking at using the underlying X11 stuff. When things get any way tricky at all, you end up just going back to the original um, X11 stuff. Uh, as, a, as it says at the bottom, the entirety of cut and paste and drag and drop were implemented in that X11 generic backend and not in, not especially for GTK2 and not especially for, for the other ones that derive from that, which we'll come to later on. Uh, in some places, then we go as far as to uh, in the GTK2 port, we go so far as to pull out the underlying XID of the GTK window and do things with it. The printing of most of these ones is uh, a generic cost package, so at least we don't have to worry about that when we're doing GTK2 and GTK3. Now, so that's pretty much the GTK2 one uh, uh, is put together. And uh, we have problems, then we go to go, when we go to do GTK3. Uh, there's a lot of overlap with GTK2, of course in the places where we're not doing anything direct with X. But we have the problem in that uh, we have nothing to back the virtual devices that we mentioned earlier. Earlier we were saying that we were backing them with X with Pixmax. But if we're going to use GTK3, then what we're looking at is being able to use GTK3 for the future, for, for Wayland support, where you don't have X11 behind you. So it's no use to us to continue to uh, do things by the X11 backend, and no use trying to do things with Pixmax. So we have to have something to back those virtual devices, those, those areas, those surfaces we draw into that are not directly visible on screen, that they're off screen, that we can do things with them. We also can no longer draw directly to windows, because we no longer are for sure that we actually have an underlying X window there, so we can't go and grab X IDs and then try and do things uh, directly with them. So, uh, and when we have a replacement for, for those Pixman backed virtual devices, the Pixman equivalent, uh, virtual devices, we need a new set of implementation that can draw into those graphics, that can do the draw rate and the draw line and the draw EPS and things like that. Um, what we have already is a headless mode, so we use a headless mode uh, right now for all of our tests that do need uh, things like this, so that we do make the headless backend was used lots of times. Uh, the original headless backend was written to be a um, a, a commercial product from Sun. So it was separated out initially from the rest of the uh, uh, OpenOffice and our uh, code base. And it a, so for that purpose, it was implemented originally as an ECL plug, so it could be an optional loaded at runtime uh, component uh, idea uh, targeted for server, uh, server applications such as document conversion hubs. Um, uh, at a later point, it was released back to us and it was uh, made part of open up to the bar, but uh, remained a uh, kind of a BCM club that was a, a load of uh, 
uh, at this stage, that back end, that headless back end, has been extended and tweaked and forms a large part of the underlying part of the Android port and the rocket time stuff and whatnot. So, all of these things that have ended up needing something to uh, render onto uh, on our platforms where they don't have support for that has ended up using the, the headless stuff here. And the headless stuff is the same thing that we're going to use, that we are using effectively as the back end GTK3 stuff. Uh, it implements, uh, it's implemented at the SAL instance and it implements a virtual, uh, virtual device button that we need to render to and mostly complete SAL graphics implementation for draw line, draw rate, uh, alpha blend and things like that. Uh, so that's what we have now. Uh, SVP is the one I just described as star view portal and operation uh, starting from the headless thing. So with GDK2 and Commence and X11, and the uh, Android stuff is back down to this back headless thing as well. And the GTK3 one then is some kind of a mutant where it uh, inherits from the SVP thing and then includes um, at build time all sorts of stuff from the GTK2 one and uh, with lots of if devs so that we inherit from SVP and we reuse as much implementation from GTK2 that makes sense. Uh, I have very little to do with any of that stuff, so that's just a description of uh, where I found it. I guess basically the text of all these people who are the commits that I saw uh, in the GTK3 directory and replaced it uh, when I put together that stuff. So, okay, that's where we were. But uh, if you've seen any of the screenshots um, that showed up in my blog over the last year, that wasn't a particularly usable at least. Okay. So, steps to make that all work better. Um, the thing here that um, the headless bag it uses is the base EMP uh, bitmap buffer. And the whole pile of places that when I uh, came into it, I found that we're doing lots of graphics file format conversion between the formats that are required to do things with Cairo and the formats that are required to do things uh, that, that, were, that were already there. We need Cairo to work because GTK3 uses Cairo all over the place. It uses the exact same, uh, uses Cairo to do its rendering. So we need to be able to render onto our surface easily with Cairo to be able to have, uh, to make it to make it manageable. So I don't do the whole pile conversion everywhere and whatnot, which is way too complicated. Uh, just cut out the middleman and add Cairo compatible formats to base EMP. So instead of converting to and from, just cut out the middleman and we have uh, an RGBX uh, file format or layout which is compatible with Cairo. That means that we can use Cairo directly on our base EMP surfaces. We can just say Cairo, Cairo create surface from the bitmap surface that we have, draw onto it with Cairo stuff, and the problem is solved. That means we were able to drop a whole pile of uh, format conversion stuff, and then a whole kind of pile of places where we were creating temporary buffers that were compatible with Cairo, draw or draw with GTK3 APIs onto it, the button, then take that button and convert it back to the older PCP format, and then put them in the right place, and do lots of work copying, and then get a minus, get them out by one error here, or out by two error here, and then it just, it, it, the things are right around the corner of the net. So it doesn't that, so get rid of all that, you can draw a chiral straight to these deep surfaces, get rid of all that conversion, and that then gives us an interesting, oh, sorry, that gives us an interesting problem. Just I'm turning the feedback. You've got the headset on the upside down. There. Right, the headset. Yeah. That is terrible <laughs> feedback. There we go, that way around. Yes. Uh, that gives us a, um, uh, uh, a better uh, solution then for um, doing the uh, 10 buffers. So uh, at that point then what we find out is that uh, we are now using a 32-bit surface, the RGBX is the 32-bit uh, in size, but we only use 24-bit of, of, of the data. But it's never considered to be a 32-bit 32 32 format. So we find that at that point, as soon as we uh, turned on the headless backend to now use the RGBX instead of its pre existing RGB file format, that we had issues with 32 bit bitmap uh, EMFs. So these bugs have existed since the EMF 32 bit support was added, which uh, it seems to be back at the very dawn of time. So there's a whole pile of 32 uh, bit bitmap uh, EMF issues to be fixed as well. So fix all those issues as well. Then we factor, yeah, then we had to split out the Cairo text rendering was only ever intended to use in GTK2 in specific areas. So I had to kind of genericize that so it was able to just work, work uh, uh, with any Cairo surface, which allows it to be reused for GTK2, GTK3, 
and to be used directly in the headless mode if the back end is a current compatible surface. Right, so that's uh, getting, getting rid of the uh, uh, layout, layout issues. Next one then is that the big, uh, big base BMP backing surface that you're drawing onto was extended to provide damage events when anything on it was modified. So again, there's a whole pile of stuff there that was sort of working but not quite working. So I decided to do it instead once again, just simplify things a bit more. So anytime anything on the back end on that uh, backing surface. Now the backing surface in this case is your, uh, your actual, what you're looking at on screen, your, 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 your actual visual uh, window. So when there's any modification into that, when like, you know, the, the word trigger is written to it or whatnot, then that creates a, a damaged event for, for that area. We look that directly to the GTK uh, widget queue draw area, mm -hmm. which is this piece of the uh, widget that needs to be uh, redrawn. You get your uh, callback then in GTK is draw, and draw will be given the part of the screen that you've claimed uh, needs to be redrawn. And that then, because we now have a Cairo compatible base map, uh, base BMP surface, and you're given in the draw uh, callback the Cairo surface of the destination, your source and destination are exactly the same file format. No more for conversion there, there's no need to calculate anything. You just take the exact rectangle you were given to update. You have, you have said that there is a rectangle to be updated. It is giving you back a rectangle that needs to be copied into a uh, destination, and you're copying your destination, your source rectangle, the destination rectangle, in the simplest fashion possible. So then, because the code is simple, is simple at this point, you can be pretty much, pretty much sure that if anything is going wrong, uh, that it's an issue in the original damage being incorrect. You no longer have a complicated situation, a simple situation that you're being, uh, that you're being given the same coordinates that you passed out. So if anything is not showing up correctly on screen, you have been the one to claim that the wrong area uh, needs to be redrawn. Which means that you just have to keep uh, debugging your damage, uh, damage uh, tracking and then start it out. And there's a whole pile of corner cases there. Uh, I think uh, the tower might even have fallen into the same problem as well, where for whatever reason there's a plus one required in the X11 uh, implementation that always has been for, for a rectangle. And the same thing needs to be done for the headless one as well. So you're finding issues like that. Now, um, that's all okay for when you have static case, you have the other case where like, somebody has the window on screen and they drag the window wire and things like that. You, you need to uh, basically trigger all those events, capture all those events and trigger yourself to resize. In the past, your uh, operating system, your window managing system would be the one to, to handle that, but now you basically have to do it manually. You have to connect to, 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 to those events and force the redraw yourself and not rely upon uh, the, the windowing system to do it. That is a potential corner case. But I think it's solved now that there might be a few corner cases with a full screen impress, not in a presentation mode, but in ordinary mode. There might still be the case where that initial resize uh, isn't been really fully, fully, fully handled. Yet, but I haven't seen it in a while, so I think I've got these All right, but that gives you something that I would blog about and I'd be very excited about. Oh, look, it works, you know, and maybe I'd be very happy about that. And everybody goes, oh, look, you know, it still looks awful. You know, so at that point, then what we have to do is get back to the native uh, widget rendering, so that you get the theming stuff working again, which is kind of uh, important, so it looks right. Uh, it's not particularly more difficult in GTK3 to do the native widget rendering as it was in GTK2, and again because it's Cairo based and we have the Cairo compatible surface, a lot of things just become a lot easier than they were in the original one. You can use all the Cairo things to. Uh, move things into the right place, copy things around, all those <coughs> uh, Cairo APIs are available to you, so you can do, do things easier. But, uh, yeah, okay, I think there's, there's a more much later on. So, uh, again, yeah, the native focus rectangles, I think, well, was a nice visual effect to show the room here and makes things look much more like uh, 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 GDK3 than, than, than GDK. I think our GDK3 implementation looks a lot more like GDK3 than our GDK2 implementation looks like GDK2. But very convenient for us, because a lot of the stuff that's new in GTK3 are very similar to the stuff you find on the Mac, so a lot of that stuff they're ready to be implemented, so let's just go around to place and just turn on the Mac style stuff for GTK3 that's implemented as well. 
What is difficult though with the native widget theming in GTK3 is that uh, the context of things, you, there's a whole like stack of context, like if you're, a, if you're, if you're like a menu arrow, you have to be a menu arrow in a menu entry, the menu entry has to be in a menu, the menu has to be in a menu bar, the menu bar has to be in the uh, top level widget, you have to have the hierarchy just right in all the context set just correctly to get the same effect as you do in GTK3 and GTK3, you know, it just happens because that's the way it actually is. Uh, in, in our work, we were not actually really using the GTK3 stuff, so we have to arrange them into the same way that they are in GTK3 to get the same vision effect, uh, which is a nuisance because you have to go right into the implementation of GTK itself to see what, how things are, you know, what, what, what context style are they using to render the button, at uh, the re render area you have to go right in and look at them, so you have to arrange things yourself in GTK, you have to investigate further or closer than I but that does allow us to get um, the support from GTK3 for gestures. So there's gesture support with GTK3 implementation. And I've only made use of them. I've added support for them, but they're only uh, uh, made use of in the impress slideshow for now. So what you can do with the slideshow is you can put your fingers on your touch screen. You can slide aside one direction, slide aside the other direction from far and back. You can uh, do a long press on your presentation to get up the context menu, and then you can draw up the pane, and then you can long press to uh, get the context menu up again and, and revert. There's only a sample use of the internet for now. And uh, what the other one as well that is, uh, I have implemented, but I have integrated just is a, a pinch to, to exit your presentation. The automatic no, mnemonics that I showed you earlier, when you press down, uh, get, get, they all come up, it's all done by uh, Simon Long from, from Raspberry Pi, so uh, I'm going to do it me, but it's very appreciative to get that at the right time. Uh, other lines have been on the appropriate keystrokes, so it's a, a B plus, and I did have to do it. Because the JDK2 one was derived from the X11 one, we got cut and pasted for free, we just reused the X, uh, X implementation. Uh, so that meant you had to do that to be able to then cut and paste from scratch, which is uh, not a lot of fun, but it wasn't as bad as I feared, but, but it was quite productive. Again, accessibility, you had to do basically, it was possible that we'd have to re implement an artifact accessibility quickly enough to GTK3 to get the opportunity to improve how things were done in GTK2. So once you figure out how, how GTK3 operates with accessibility, it's 10 times easier than the GTK2 one to get that, in, get that integrated. So once you finally figure out our plug the week, you've got like four lines of code to plug our all of our old accessibility stuff right into the new and GTK3 stuff and everything just continues as before. So that was a great way that there wasn't as much effort in accessibility as there could have been. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And then they, they, it just comes with a new API call to do something that was very difficult in GTK2. So that's the GTK3 stuff. That's basically why it took as long as it did. And that's why it's a bit more difficult than it might initially appear, even that we had GTK2 working because we never really had GTK2 working. We had so GTK2 working that we just left it up to our excellent implementation to fill in the ranks. The reason I'm doing all this is because uh, Red Hat wants to get things working on Wayland. All of that stuff there is, and this is still a, a, an hour X server here, so all that stuff is the X implementation. At that point then we got something that's halfway working, but pretty much working. And we uh, flip over to Wayland and we see it doesn't work under Wayland yet. Uh, so, why didn't things work under Wayland? The first thing is that your top level window under Wayland now is really toxic. You don't want to do anything with your top level window. The first thing we have done with our top level window is to say, is to say that it's uh, double buffer. Is to turn off its double buffer. Uh, yeah, if you turn off double buffering in Wayland, then you get a blank screen. Not like a blank screen, like it's grey or blue, but like a transparent uh, window that you don't realise is even there for a while. So if you do, if you read the documentation, the documentation now says, uh, don't use this in the Wayland. I don't know why, it just doesn't like, print out, don't use me, on the console, when you're under Wayland. That would save a lot of effort. Because I had read all this documentation quite a while ago, so I knew it, so I didn't need to revisit it, I thought. So I, there was nothing about Wayland, in, we just said double buffered in the past. But anyway, when I finally revisited the documentation, all of it here. Um, Again, we connect to draw on the top. We connect to draw on the top level window. If you connect to draw on the top level window, uh, you no longer get the same effect under Wayland as you did under X. Under X, it all worked out perfectly fine. Under Wayland, the top level window is toxic, 
So you get your offset from basically underneath the decoration. The decoration where it's part of the top level window. So if you can hit the top level window and ask to draw when uh, you need to redraw it, you end up drawing underneath the decoration and your application is all offset in it. And similar with similar similar. So the overall solution for anything is to move away from the top level window and go to one level down. And we already had some uh, widget on the top level that we were using to capture accessibility events. That becomes a far more important widget in GDK3. That becomes the actual widget that we connect uh, events to. So we now draw, <coughs> previously only for accessibility window, is now expanded a bit in GTK3 and is the contents of the window. And that's what we draw to instead. Again, if you connect to mouse events at the top of the window, then nothing happens. You, you get a window that's only sized and you're after kicking out some other unknown uh, event handlers for that. Again, the solution is again, you have to move down the level again, put an event box in between your top level window and this widget that we're drawing to. And that gives us something that will uh, accept events so that we can um, uh, 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 move, reside the window, and then get our, uh, the mouse events in. in so that's where, that's all the completed stuff, the things I described there are all done as well, so that if you do have a Wayland version, uh, a Wayland server and you start on LibreOffice uh, 5.1 master version, uh, you'd have something that's used but pretty much the same as you have before the X one that I showed you earlier. What doesn't work is a uh, placement of an input, but that's because placement when it doesn't work, actually work all that well for GTK itself, so that's still a, a work in progress, so it's not really much point investigating that further until, until the GTK itself uh, is happy with, with the main placement. So what I know is missing out of GTK 3 port, uh, is uh, drag and drop support. Uh, that's on my list. Uh, I'll get to it one of the days. Uh, G Streamer support shouldn't be that difficult. I haven't got around there to it yet. The top level windows under Wayland, there's still some stuff that needs to be sorted out there. Again, not too difficult, it can be done. Uh, we still have these horrible selection of tenders using Zara. You'll find them in the layout, I mean, the layout area of the panel in the press. So if you move your mouse down there on the GTK31, you'll, you'll see some. some um, uh, focus rectangles appear and disappear uh, because of the result that's not implemented, probably never will be uh, in those uh, back ends of the point of view of all that. Uh, yeah, and all these 32 bit uh, bitmaps, they're all on the unoptimized paths. As I said before, how we uncovered all these bugs in the 32 bit EMF bitmaps. So, uh, so they all this is on the unoptimized path, so there's lots of opportunity for optimization down along this route as well. This will presumably affect uh, the Android stuff as well. Uh, yeah, and there's lots of stuff that's uh, not implemented in that original SVP backend, so yeah, we're going to find some things like jacket here and there. So, what you need to do like, is improve that backend for the purpose of improving all the backends. There is some possible future stuff. Okay, we are the future. Well, we're worried about that for now. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is that I do have one, I'd like to make things more GTK3 like, and I have a little sample right in some place where I'm using native, truly native GTK3 dialogues. I'd like to get some opportunity to. Uh, to expand your <laughs> okay, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. When did Spyro's get out to rendering in place of using the STMB? I did it for, uh, I did some stuff with like directly with Cairo, like the alpha bitmaps, you know, you can do the blue selecting thing. Uh, I did start some stuff with Cairo. I don't know, is Cairo available for all of the teams that need to head to this back end because I was a bit worried about doing stuff. You can stop with Cairo. That's a bit of an unsure of Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. so, I wonder if the slides can destroy all the problems with the duty powers of Raylan. Are you going to draw the bucks in Raylan? I can't quite hear it. Are they bugs in Wayland? If, if, if there were bugs, they'd be, they'd be bugs in GTK3 up under Wayland, I think. Okay. But so I don't the think they're. Stop it, all right, cars, resize, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're an army GTK3 application, you, you don't do any kind of things that we do. So the only other person that really does the kind of things we do are ourselves, uh, Firefox, and Eclipse. And they have the same kind of problems. But yeah, for for a yeah. yeah. three application, it works just fine. But it sounds like it could be fixed in one place and not in five applications. Uh, I, I don't pretend to know why the top level is rated, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a good reason for it. I just don't know. Okay.
Okay, that's the end. Bye-bye.